And this fall, we were able to yield check it. And the data that I had out here is that uh, we ended up with a nine bushel yield advantage. Uh, so this is a, a farm that I bought back in the mid eighties and uh, started doing a little bit of research, um, especially on dry fertilizer. And uh, so we set up these plots about 20 years ago. Um, we've got 60 feet without P and K, and then we've got 60 feet with P and K, and 60 feet without, and 60 feet with. And so what we were looking for was the yield advantage to using phosphorus and potassium. And, and I guess to kind of summarize, I, I struggled to get an economic response uh, to surface applied phosphorus and potassium. And so uh, let's say I'd use $100 worth of P and K. Um, I, I'd struggle to get $50 worth of corn, even if corn was $5 uh, a bushel. And then when we go to soybeans, we'd put $50 down on this block and then we'd yield check it. And I was lucky to get $35 worth of uh, soybeans. And so I really questioned, you know, was there an economic advantage to phosphorus potassium? And we started kind of uh, investigating the concept of, of stratification. If I surface supply the P and K, does it make its way down into the soil profile? And so essentially I was putting P and K above the roots instead of putting the P and K in the root zone. So we came out here in a flat black area, marked it, and I soil tested by the inch. So we put the probe on the tailgate of the truck, cut it up into eight chunks, put it into eight different bags, sent it off to the lab, and sure enough, um, all of the phosphorus and potassium that I had surface applied over the last 20 years was still on the surface. It, it hadn't even moved more than an inch. And uh, so we had about 50% of the nutrients that were in that eight inch profile. 50% of them were in the top two inches. And uh, we were starving for nutrients down in the root zone and we had a surplus uh, in the top couple inches. So then my question was, well, what happens if we incorporate uh, that 20 years worth of surface applied P and K? And so uh, we took the soil test, you know, before, and then last year, then I came in and, and moldboard plowed it uh, with the old uh, tractor and the old five bottom plow that I had, you know, when I was in college. And uh, we plowed about 10 inches deep or so, and mixed it in the ground. and. And we planted beans. So this fall, uh, well, oh, we went in and and then uh, resoil tested uh, by the inch. And uh, you betcha, the Bulwark plow had done a nice job of incorporating uh, the P and the K. And um, so we had uh, moved the nutrients down into the, about the, the five to six inch, seven inch area and um but still down at the eight inch area the, the nutrient level really didn't change much um using the, the mobile plow i i should have drove a little faster and i could have maybe completely flipped that soil profile upside down but i didn't i just kind of stood it vertically and then we we did some tillage so to incorporating 20 years worth of phosphorus and potassium into the root zone by using a moldboard plow. Now, how much of the nine bushel came from the tillage? How much of it came from the destratification of the phosphorus potassium? I can't answer that question. But I do know that the uh, P and K uh, grows better crops when it's in the root zone instead of being above the root zone. Um, they'd always told me that P and K doesn't move, but phosphorus moves about one inch, potassium about two inches. And they're exactly right. Uh, the earthworms don't eat this stuff and then burrow a hole in the soil and then poop it out somewhere. Um, it just doesn't, doesn't go down. So stratification is a naturally occurring event um, on this planet. Um, plants have been growing for billions of years and they suck nutrients out of the ground, bring them to the top and then the plant dies and then those nutrients are left on the surface. So 
we found out a nine bushel advantage to destratifying P and K with a moldboard plow. So now this year we came back in, we put fertilizer on again in this particular plot, same one, and now we're incorporating the phosphorus, potassium, and we're using uh, the old Glencoe uh, chisel plow uh, behind the quad track. Uh, we got we got plenty of tractor, trust me, to pull that 15 foot uh, chisel plow. And we're not on uh, auto steer uh, because I'm, I'm just doing a, a 60 foot plot here. And um, so I guess what I'm, what I'm looking to find out, we put, a, I think it was $150 worth of P and K on this fall in this particular plot. And uh, what we'll learn next fall when we come into harvest is uh, again, by putting this nutrients in the root zone, what kind of yield advantage did we get? So um, there's a part one to this story and there's a part two. And uh, I'm anxious to find out um, what kind of yield advantage that we have when the P and K are in the root zone and we follow with corn. Now, from that moment in time next fall, then we're going to start moving toward using strip till or root zone banding, whatever. Uh, but uh, we have all but stopped putting phosphorus and potassium on the surface because there's just not any yield advantage to it. And I can make way more money by having the nutrients in the profile, not on top of the, the root zone. So with that, I hope you find this intriguing. Uh, I am a no-teller. Uh, but we're doing the, the chisel plowing here simply to incorporate the phosphorus potassium. So stay tuned. Uh, go to our website at calmercornheads.com. You can always call me on my cell phone at 309-368-1182. And I'd be happy to discuss this uh, with you as well. But it's something I've learned the hard way over 20 years worth of studying phosphorus potassium. So with that, I um, hope you have a great year and stay safe. Thank you.